A couple of months ago, I came across this tweet by Bella Mundi which says, Your wife leaves for work at 6 a.m., returns at 7 p.m. You still expect her to make you dinner? There were various comments to this tweet. Some were supportive, others were funny, some were rude. But this one particular comment caught my attention and it was by a young lady. And I, I could smell attitude all over the comments, so I'm going to read it with a little bit of drama. And the annoying thing is, you will meet them in the house waiting for your tired self to come and cook for them. You are a wife, not a slave. Since when do cooking for your husband make you a slave? We often talk about women's problems in the society, which, as we should, but we hardly ever bring up the hardships that men also have to endure in our society. Now correct me if I'm wrong. Marriage is a union between two people. It is a union in which two people become one. For better for worse, right? In my opinion, in order to find the right answer or the perfect solution to this problem, we have to tackle it from both sides. Because if you actually look at it, men and women play their roles as husband and wives in marriages based on gender norms. Traditionally, men are seen as strong, so they are expected to work, earn money and take care of their families. Women, on the other hand, are seen as loving, nurturing, caring, so they are expected to stay home, do housework which includes cooking and taking care of the children. We often seem to forget that men are also victims of the society. Now, don't get me wrong, I know how the patriarchy works. Men have been dominating and still are in today's world. However, they act the way they do because society deems it that way. Listen, there's an unhealthy pressure on men to be financially stable. You have no choice. Making money is non-negotiable. As a man in an African setting, if you don't have money, you are not a functional member of society. You will not be deemed worthy of anything. You won't be respected. Absolutely nothing. This is why we notice that when boys hit the ages 16 and above, they begin to search for avenues that will enable them make money, especially fast money. Fraud became so common, it is almost normalized today. If I call somebody a fraud boy, it doesn't necessarily hold a negative connotation in fact people are going to look at him and be like oh then he has money we can also talk about the two teenage boys that stabbed a 10 year old to death because they were going to use him for money rituals in fact just recently we heard of the man that had three heads of little kids in his fridge come to hear that he was actually selling the body parts to who I'm not saying that there are no women involved in these kinds of cases. I'm saying that the majority of people that are usually caught are men. And why do you think that is? Because of the pressure that has been placed on them to be financially stable. We honestly don't talk about how hard it actually is to make money. Of course, there are women today working the same 9 to 5 just like their husbands, earning money, taking care of the family, but it's not expected of them. Women don't have to shoulder the same burden of expectations of the society like the men do. Women are not expected to make money. In the same sense, men are not expected to know how to cook. Take my religion for instance, a woman's money is her money. If she decides to contribute to the family financially, that is up to her. But a man's money is for the family, it's for the wife, it's for the kids, it's for the man, it's for everybody. Sometimes it's almost sad, a man would receive his salary and there are bills to settle, fees to pay, mouths to feed. There are times where they don't even get to spend some of the money on themselves and everything is already finished. I am all for revolution, I'm all for change, but I also believe in one step at a time. If you impose it on people, they will reject it. A lot of us are still very much traditional in our ways because that is how we were brought up. There are men out there that expect that their wives cook for them and there are also women out there that feel obliged to cook for their husband. You will also find that there are a lot of women who know how to cook and do house chores while men on the other hand do not know how to do these things because Again, that is how we were raised. Geographically speaking, in Accra for instance, you would meet a lot of people that are open-minded. They don't really mind who is the breadwinner of the family. But if you go to a place like Tamale, the people are so traditional in their ways. I keep traditional. 
for me i feel like marriages and relationships are just those things where we should not involve masculinity or feminism especially today where you can actually pick the person you want to spend the rest of your life with marry somebody you can talk to somebody who values you somebody who understands you when two people decide to get married in my head i'm assuming that they love each other and that's why they decided to get married this should be someone you should be able to communicate with and come to some sort of agreement with this is one of the things that you should talk about while you guys are dating or courting if you're not the type of woman who will be cooking for her husband you should let him know do not assume that because you were not doing it while you guys were dating he should know by now he's expecting that when you get married things will change there are several men out there that actually don't mind they're very supportive in fact there are men out there that can cook so they can actually cook for the family don't go and marry somebody's son and be stressing him at home with i am your wife i'm not your slave i'm not obliged to cook for you ma'am ma'am and to the guys who don't tell her you support her dreams and that you don't mind that after marriage you start stressing her life and asking her why she's not cooking for you and things, don't do that. Don't do that. If for some reason you will not be able to cook for your husband, you should offer him an explanation. Kind of tell him beforehand so that he can find something to eat. You don't have to be rude about it. Being rude to your husband or being rude to guys in general does not make you a feminist. It just makes you arrogant and ignorant. Educate yourself. Now listen, if your husband is the kind of man who will raise his hand against you simply because you could not prepare food for him, it has a lot to say about the kind of person he is. You shouldn't even be with him in the first place. But then again, what do I know? <laughs> this matter is not even that complicated. During the weekend, you can prepare stew, soups, and keep them in the refrigerator. You can also teach your husband how to prepare like simple foods like rice or yam, so that in case of your absence, he can fix something to eat. If the both of you are working and no one has time to take care of the house, you can hire a maid or even ask for uh, help from one of your relatives. For my last point, which I think is very, very, very important, we should change how we raise our children, whether male or female, you will wash, you will cook, you will clean. It should not matter with gender. And I feel like if we should do that, that will pave a way for people to change their mentality and it will also help us achieve our goal. I really do not agree to the marriage should be a 50-50 affair because even with successful businesses, that's not always the case. It really shouldn't matter who does how much in a relationship just so long as the both of you are contributing to the success of your marriage or your relationship. That's what I think. In conclusion, my answer to Bella Mundi's tweet is yes. Yes. I'm expecting that she still cooks for her husband. It's only 7 o'clock. You can... Bryce will prepare under 30 minutes. Or yum. And that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to reading all of your comments in the comment section. So feel free to share your opinions with me. Goodbye. And I hope to see you guys in my next one.